Hey, welcome back everyone. Rob here from Ram Studio Comics and today I am going to uh, work on this uh, Two-Face picture and uh, talk about rendering. So unless you guys uh, give me some really great advice on which way to take it, I think that uh, rendering should be fun. Um, but yeah, and let me know what the uh, quality is like as far as audio, video. Let's do a, a check. You don't mind. Hello, get responsibility. Ever grow up <laughs> like that? Good to have you. So yeah, so let's go ahead and uh, start drawing on this, and you guys let me know what the uh, the audio and everything sounds like, and. Um, Seems good. Okay, sounds good. So yeah, what I thought about this one is to kind of show how I might start off like very uh, rough and scribbly and try to find textures out of this. But that might be a fun little exercise for us. It's good. All right, thanks off sketch. Appreciate that. Everything's good. Nathaniel, good to have you. All right. So yeah. So um. Uh, so if you see here on the forehead of this this dude, it's pretty rough, right? I mean, it's definitely just scribbles. And um, hi, Perry, good to have you. Um, and and I actually like starting that way because uh, oh, let me give you guys fair warning. It's saying the stream's current bit rate is lower than the recommended. It did keep saying that on our last live stream, and we seem to be able to make it through. But I like to warn you guys on what I'm seeing. I don't know if you get to see the same warnings or not. So. Uh, now, Lewis, when you say feathering, are you saying like like line weight, line feathering, thick to thin, that kind of texturing you're talking about, or uh, cross hatching? But yeah, just elaborate on that if you don't mind. And uh, so yeah, so what I'll tend to do is I'll just scribble because what I'm what I'm looking for in this kind of mucky scribbling is this high and low texture. You see these wrinkles and. Um, you know imperfections and somebody like Two-Face and you know this can be used for stuff like Venom and uh, any of the creature design kind of characters uh, you know creatures like Croc or um, another one that comes to mind is uh, I've been seeing a lot of good posts of uh, Swamp Thing and I want to do one of him next because again he's got like all that texture on texture and overlapping effects so what happens is if you start off just kind of scribbling and almost like a brainless kind of activity, you know, just crisscrossing shapes, and then soft erase it back, and then look for some of those shapes. So, uh, what I tend to think about is almost like this, you know, melting flesh, this kind of Freddy Krueger thing going on, where, you know, it's like you got some of these areas that are larger and on top, almost like a vein, and then beneath that and beside that, you might have. You know pockets so for that you might just kind of stipple add some little dabs of shadow make sure to use lots of little line breaks and what happens are these little scribbles they don't always give you a clear-cut path or I guess I should say they never give you a clear-cut path but they kind of hint towards areas that you can bring out in the design so you just play with it you know you just kind of try a shadow here a little break there uh, if you find yourself going in too much of a repetitive kind of pattern, break away from that because this should look very um, organic and, and you know non uh, repetitive. Basically, it needs to be uh, just very random. So I'll just kind of play around with that concept. You know, thick to thin lines. And this can really be a fun kind of activity. Like it's just a, I don't know, something to really zone out on and have a good time with. You can come up with all sorts of neat little things here. And another thing I think that really helps this portion uh, is actually studying uh, wrinkles and folds, not in just skin, but like drapery. Uh, I've actually been doing some studies of... Um, Clothing, like you know, I'm getting ready to do a series of lessons on 
doing suit designs and clothing and shirts and, and like dress wear, all that good stuff. Because uh, it's such a hard thing to, to wrap your head around sometimes. Uh, so you got to practice it often. But the same shapes that I see in here, especially like this area under the eye, this this spot right here, you can see me drawing the arrow to it. It's like a big fold of, um, it could be used for a cape, it could be used for clothing, wrinkles on a shirt, whatever. Uh, so you kind of combine some of that way of thinking into some of this. But again, just kind of play around with these shapes. You know, don't be afraid to throw like a big um, depthy kind of pocket, a recessed area. Because it'll make it look more uh, creepy. You know, like he's got this big, almost gaping hole on his head. And then kind of work off of that so we can like shade this down a little bit and make it look like it's recessed. And then maybe, you know, fold the skin around it, some lines coming off it, so on and so forth. Just gonna play around with it. Yeah, thanks, Perry. I appreciate the kind comment. Uh, let's see if there's any questions here. Uh, Marcel says I'm drawing a real version of Flintstones. Very cool. Always nice to draw along. Yeah, you know that's what's fun about these. I uh, I often do that as well. Like I draw along with uh, you know Jim Lee. I watch his stuff and draw along. Um, lots of great content out there of other uh, artists that you know we all can gain inspiration from. It's just kind of fun. It's almost like you're drawing in a studio with uh, a few other artists. I always get like jealous when I hear the old school artists talk about working in studios and they're like, yeah, hey, you know, you just kind of look over and see what the other guy's working on. You converse and talk different ideas. And I'm like, man, a lot of that's probably a thing of the past. I mean, there's probably definitely some, uh, some of those left, those big studios where people are working together and stuff like that. But it's not as, not as common. I think freelancing is a lot more common these days, so. You kind of, you lose that, uh, that synergy, you know, that when people are all working together and they, again, they can play off each other's uh, strengths. And plus, you know, just being able to show somebody something, oh, I'm struggling on this area, what would you do here? And getting some fresh eyes on it, like a, a creative director, like a lot of those big companies, they do still have those, but they'll have, uh, especially gaming companies they have creative directors and you know so it's it's got to be very helpful when you're you know not having your uh your greatest work and your best inspiration but i guess it's also got to suck when that person comes up and tells you you're doing everything wrong and you gotta start over no fun there <laughs> you should make daffy duck versus darkwing duck fighting yeah that's a ticket no, that'd be fun, man, but I, I'm going to work on this one. But I, uh, yeah, I'm not as good at, at those animated characters like that. It would be neat to try, and I probably should try it since I, uh, I'm not as good at those characters. I need to venture out and do that more. You learn a lot from, uh, you know, doing the things that you're not strong at. But yeah, that's probably not my uh, greatest strength there. Oh, my goodness. My Apple Pencil just died. You gotta be kidding me. And the only way to charge it is plugging it into the very thing that's making the live stream go. You got to be kidding me. Okay, let's see if I got a backup here, folks. Running into some technical difficulties. I forgot to charge my Apple Pencil. What can I do here? And you know what? Let's try this because I don't want to ruin the live stream. Very sorry about this. Let's jump over to the Cintiq, I guess. Is anybody partial to me working in Procreate or on uh, Clip Studio? I'm kind of partial to it. I wanted to work in this uh, app, but yeah, I wasn't realizing that I had to first charge my Apple Pencil. Uh, Lewis asking how long I'll be live streaming for um, at least an hour. I, I try to always do at least one hour um, I don't think I can push it past that Because uh, I got some things I got to do this evening 
Um, but let me do this. I'm going to bring this artwork over and uh, drop it into Clip Studio here. Forgive me, guys. It's uh, I can't believe I just did this. So yeah, I'm going to need to unplug this. You're going to see the art disappear, but I'm going to bring it back up over um, into Clip Studio. So just give me one minute, please. And I got to move this mic over. Hopefully it doesn't sound horrible as I reposition this sucker. Okay, so there we go. Ah, so yeah, sorry about that. Goodness. Once we're drawn in uh, Procreate, you know, I... I do think it's pretty silly that they make it where you have to plug it into the one uh, one opening you got there, you know, to charge it and do all that. And that's the drawback because I wasn't remembering that I needed to charge it before the live stream. Okay. Anyways, we'll do it in Clip Studio. Okay, so same concept really. I mean, the the brush is going to look a little bit different, but that's not a big deal. Same ideas though. You just have to get in here and find some shapes and create imperfections and overlaps. They're doing a lot of these like little divots. And the thing I've found too is you can really do uh, a lot of smaller details and basically get the feeling that it's receding into the, um, the pocket of skin or whatever and uh, kind of convey depth or convey um, distance. Like you can, it's, it's almost the same concept as when you're, illustrating a city and you try to put some things in the background you can make like a bunch of tiny little imperfections or randomized shapes and it will look like more detail and, and a greater distance in that area same thing you know with uh, almost anything i guess you know so And I love doing this type of rendering because you can't really get it wrong, you know, you're, you're doing imperfections. So uh, you can really have a lot more fun with it, I feel. Or when I look at something that has to be a certain way, uh, it changes the way that I create it and have fun with it. Like I, I start feeling like, especially when I'm drawing like a, you know, pretty face or something that has really defined symmetry to it. Uh, I have to concentrate more. So then I have to look at, you know, sometimes even look at reference and just kind of uh, deliberate more. Or on something like this, I can just kind of let go and have fun with it. Lyle says, I made it to your live stream for the first time. Good to have you, bud. 
Thanks, Artifacts. Uh, glad you like the eye. And let me read some of these other comments real quick. I have a very similar two-faced portrait, but shows the ugly side in front. Does it mean anything, Doctor? <laughs> no, actually, to tell you the truth, you you did it right. I uh, I did this, and I got so far into it, and I thought, should have put the ugly side up front. What am I doing? It's two-faced. You want that eeriness to be closer. Uh, so actually, I made a mistake here by doing the, you know, Harvey Dent side. I guess they're both Harvey Dent, but, you know, I, or did they... They refer to him as Harvey Dent on the one side, right? Or Harvey and the other one's Two-Face, or is it just Two-Face? I don't know. But anyways, I think you did it right. I should have put the ugly side up close, and I would have gave all this area more detail. I, I do plan on doing this where I do this, and this isn't groundbreaking. This has been done a hundred times, thousand times over with this character. But I want to do the um, the dark rendering on this side, something like that. And then the light rendering on this side, and I might even flip flop those like a, a yin and yang symbol. Uh, I think it'll contrast it well, and you know, because he's going to be lighter on this side. So then the darker background with more texture, and then a light kind of texture or shading on this side. So that's kind of the idea of uh, where I'm going to take it. I could almost do it with a, um, you know, some windows or something. I don't know, but I'm just going to figure that out as I go. Man, I'm kind of mad that I want to switch it back over to the iPad. I was really digging. I, I like the way the uh, the brush works in the iPad where I get my my kind of thick to thin uh, texturing. Um, I actually feel that is a little bit superior in that software, but I guess it just depends on how you're feeling and what you're warmed up to because it's not like I've only done good art on the iPad. I feel like I've done some of my best work on uh in this software as well it just just depends they can all get the job done no no one um uh, software is you know a great one versus the other one being uh incomparable or whatever they're they're all great in their own ways I do like the brushes better in Clip Studio though. I just tried to make that chain brush and I actually started that in Procreate and I couldn't get it to go. And then I jumped over here to Clip Studio and was able to get it the way I wanted pretty quickly. So I do have to take my hat off to uh, Clip Studio for the brush creation. They do have the, they do have the um, best brushes that I've seen. <laughs> Thanks. I didn't know the woman's cup game was going. Sorry to have you torn between those two uh, options every third stroke. That's that sucks. I'm sorry. Sometimes I wonder what Rinks would say. Rinks would say if they looked on my sketches. I'm not quite understanding that. Oh, shrinks, as in psychologists. Oh, goodness. Sorry, I'm working off half a brain here today, people. Um, Yeah, so what, what would shrinks think? <laughs> Did you have just said therapist or psychologist? You would have made it easier on me. Um, yeah, I don't. I wouldn't look into that too much, you know. We, we all worry about, we're artists. I'm sure, if, you know, every one of us got psychoanalyzed. They'd find a little something, something. You know, we're, we're crazy uh, by nature, I think. I think you got to be a little bit crazy to sit around and doodling uh, imaginative stuff on paper all day, but it's a good kind of crazy, you know? I mean, everybody loves an artist, right? Is that just what they tell me to my face? Oh, my God. Oh, no. It's all been lies. I sit on a throne of lies. All right, so... Yeah, thanks, uh, Punter. That chain brush you did is awesome. I appreciate that. I worked pretty hard on that one. And I uh, and also appreciate that from Subhan Golden Dude. The Golden Finna Dude. Damn, that's creepy and awesome at the same time. That is the goal. Creepy and awesome. You know, that's, that's what's neat about doing this kind of stuff that doesn't make sense. You know, just skipping around and texturizing and making bumps and 
it, you're just doodling. Um, but it does look creepy. It looks kind of weird and nasty, and that's what you want for this this guy. And, and I think this is a really neat character. It, it's kind of sad to say this is the first time I've ever drawn Two Face. Isn't that silly? Like I, I love comics. I draw all these comics. I got to really stop drawing the same characters over and over. Like I've drawn Spidey a hundred times. I don't even know how many times. I, as many times as I've drawn Spider-Man, I probably should work for Marvel, but I don't. So instead of me just drawing Spider-Man over and over and Venom over and over, I need to practice a bunch of these characters that I've never tried. I mean, that's experience and that's, that's fun, you know, but, but here I am, this, uh, you know, super fan of those characters and I, I end up overdoing it and I end up sticking with them too much when I need to uh, venture out and try a bunch of these other neat characters like somebody mentioned earlier about drawing Daffy Duck or somebody. Uh, yeah, I don't do shout outs. Um, Vlogmation Alan, I don't do those. Vlogmation Alan, I just want you to know that. Vlogmation Alan, I do not do shout outs. Okay, is that, is that good enough? Yeah, I'm not a shout out kind of guy. I'm, I'm more like low key, laid back. I, I don't shout a whole lot. More like a whisperer kind of person. All right, so let's get this soft erase because this isn't looking good right there. Oh, that's not the soft erase, that is the hard erase. But hopefully you can see that, you know, a lot of that craziness just comes from scribbles. So get in there with a real light. You can turn the opacity down or just draw it in soft erase. But just crisscross some shapes. It's weird. I feel like if I do this first and then I go through and pick it apart, I can find a lot more neat effects. But if I draw this and then I draw up here, you know, maybe against just the white canvas, it doesn't come out as good for some reason. And you can even mix it up and put a little bit heavier strokes throughout. But again, try to keep them organic, moving side to side, little you know wiggles and overlaps. Um, and also make sure to bump up the edge. I think that helps a lot because it's kind of weird when you put all this cool texture, but then at the, the edge of it, the head goes like this. It just doesn't make sense because, you know, if it's got all this texture you can see, Surely it's going to change the perimeter shape as it wraps around the uh, side of this guy's head. Yeah, so just remember that. Please and thank you. Okay, I got nothing. Anybody, any uh, whisper sweet nothings? Oh, yeah, that's me. Have you ever drew dark side? Yeah, you know, I have. I Not a lot, but I've drawn them once or twice. But that'd be another fun one to try as well. Yeah, oh, you know what's funny? I just drew Dark Side. That's why it was popping up in my head. I was drawing them a couple times because I've played around with the character on sketches. But then I actually just had a commission uh, at a show where uh, a guy came up and wanted me to just draw Dark Side into this collage. It was actually a really neat collage because, um, well, I guess all collages are kind of neat, but... It was neat because he goes around and gets uh, a bunch of different artists to add to that same picture and has them all draw different characters. And um, yeah, it was really, really kind of neat to work on that. And it's it's always fun to, you know, illustrate on a page where other artists have illustrated on. It's pretty cool. It's I think it does a couple things. One, it's like you're trying not to look bad because you got all these other amazing artists drawn on this page right so there's like this competitive edge thing going on and the other thing is that you're just kind of out of your element because you're normally just drawing on a maybe your own page and coming up with your own idea or even working for somebody and, and doing a page of their creations but as soon as you have to make your artwork kind of meld with this other picture of other artists it really changes the dynamic of it but it's it's a great experience. I recommend everybody does it. Um, back in the day when I uh, I did comic conventions, way back before I you know fell out of it and got back into it, um, that used to kind of be a, a regular thing. I remember people always uh, passing around uh, a sheet of Bristol board 
at the shows and everybody kind of contributing to it. So it was it was really neat. And then you'd get copies of it. And I think the person that started it would keep the original or something. But it was always a great um, a great thing to remember the show. All right, still trying to find some of these shapes. Another one that I think looks cool is when you um, you overlap, you kind of bridge it, I guess. So I'll do this pocket right here, and then I'll bring this vein kind of over it, and then I'll do the shadow that it casts on this other part that it's overlapping. And what you do is you can actually convey the, the depth of this area right here by adding the by adding the shadow that it casts on the sides of it. Hopefully you can make that out. And then likewise up here, you can continue that if you want to. It's weird. You have to like try to practice drawing things and omitting certain shapes. It really looks a lot more effective. Uh, but it does take some practice, I think. Again, I'm trying to get the shadow of this and then a deeper shadow to the sides. I'm trying not to draw the top line as much of this uh, overlap. Then as I go back and render it, I should be able to make it look a little bit more impressive. I'll add a little bit of uh, kind of line work to it. You guys got any questions or am I just uh, rambling here? Yeah, organic shapes to me are a lot easier um, off sketch. Like, like uh, I don't know. I, I guess it depends on what I'm using them for. But geometric shapes, they they have they they have to be right. They they're apparent when they're not right. So they're out of perspective or something. And where organic shapes, I mean, there you do still want to think about perspective. I have to like make this appear that all this information is wrapping around the spherical nature of his, his dome you know like it, it's got to look like it wraps around his head and i try to think about that as i'm implementing it but you don't you don't really have to be that accurate because it's it's so messy and and uh organic you know free-flowing so i think it's uh it is a lot easier for me anyways I, I really just feel like it's doodling. Like this part to me is just kind of relaxing. Which is weird because it seems like all drawing would be relaxing. But I definitely find those those parts in my uh, creative process where certain things are harder and certain things are frustrating. It's just sad because I like why would drawing ever be frustrating? But, uh, you know, if there's something I'm trying to get right in an illustration, I just don't see it. And I'm having to pull reference that. That's frustrating to me. Like, I don't even like doing that. Um, I really just like drawing whatever comes to mind and then not, not worrying about that. But I don't find it to be good uh, practice for ever working professionally. It's kind of a double-edged sword for me because a lot of times I don't do uh, commissions and freelance work like like some, you know, some artists, like some of you watching. Maybe that's how you make your living. Um, where I actually basically, um, oh, sorry to see you go, Subhan. Thanks for coming by. Um, I actually do more of just this content creation. So there's a lot of times when I do just draw what comes to mind and whatever somebody might request, uh, but in my own way. So they might request a character, but I might draw them in any number of ways. I have a certain amount of freedom there, which is great, but it also weakens me. It makes me less uh viable you know in, in the marketplace if i have to they have to go back to work doing storyboards or i have to start doing uh page work day to day that's one of the things that i have to start doing more pages on the channel here because um you know that's where i want to end up i want to end up doing storytelling doing pages and the only way to do that is to steadily knock out pages so i gotta i gotta get back on that But yeah, the organic stuff is definitely easier for me. It's definitely true. 
It just it's almost like it requires less thought process or something. But I did just draw a bunch of um clothing and sleeves and shirts and it's like I, I do I feel like that kind of translated a little bit to this piece which is weird because you know probably don't look at this and think clothing but um folds and wrinkles in general just they, they kind of you know kind of relate little pockets and overlaps and Yeah, thanks, Pat. I appreciate it. And Lyle says, I have an easier time with geometric shapes. Well, then there you go. You just, we have to team up with people that their strengths match our weaknesses, right? So, or contradict our weaknesses. I said that wrong, didn't I? Their strengths complement our weaknesses. Yeah, and I, I don't mean to make it sound like I can't draw geometric shapes. I mean, I, I practice perspective all the time, practice buildings all the time. I've been practicing cars again, um, even though I, I know just I can trace cars. Uh, that sounds so horrible, but I came from storyboards and everybody in storyboards traced cars. I mean, there was a few people that were proud in their ways and said, oh, I, I draw my cars and but it just takes so much longer and there's so much car reference. It's so easy to just find them and slap a quick trace on them that the, the agents actually tell you to do that. They supply you even with the shots they want. But, uh, but again, back to that weakness thing, you know, I, I make myself draw them anyways, mainly because I, I want to be able to create, like for instance, if I want to do a modern car, like a futuristic car, I don't want to have to use reference i mean i can use reference and then change it to my own version so i always find you know always make myself study and draw it from imagination or you know glancing at a picture but not tracing it um but yeah it's it's real easy to want to just trace them because it's so much faster and you know you're still going to stylize it in the way that you ink it and change it to your own artwork anyway so it's not like you have to be able to draw 20 different cars from imagination there's again there's just so much reference out there how did i just make you guys mad when i said trace cars every time i say trace it's like somebody's like oh my god why would you ever because if there's a deadline i'm gonna trace whatever i gotta get my hands on <laughs> uh, it's just, it's just one of them things like i think that you know, to impress people, you draw freehand. You say, look what I can do. Look, I'm not looking at any pictures of anybody. I'm just drawing a mushy head right now. Like, wow, that looks cool. Thanks, I appreciate it. But it's this is actually pretty darn easy. But the the um, the cars for me are hard. There's just something in my head doesn't click as well when I go to draw cars. I end up drawing them all like science fiction motorcycles or something they just they come out different um but you know I, I just i can't deny that when i've listened to some of these amazing artists that work in the industry and they talk about tracing like it's no big deal but then other people are like that's horrible that you would ever mention tracing to your audience like i've had people say it to me they're like dude you have an audience you it's your responsibility to make sure that you don't uh Warp their young minds is basically how they put it to me. Not not in that way, but that's kind of how they say it. And I'm like, what are, you, what are you talking about? I'm being as honest and transparent as I can when I do these videos. And and I've I've worked with other professional artists. It's not like I, I haven't. I just haven't worked in like say Marvel and DC. So maybe I don't know what's acceptable in that circle or whatever. But I've worked with a lot of you know big commercial artists that that are well known and done some pretty amazing stuff you know comics and otherwise and yeah they don't they don't see like i just made that uh brush somebody mentioned it. i don't know how many of you just saw the video but i made a brush where it makes chain links because i was drawing spawn and i didn't want to draw the chain links you know it's not that i can't draw chain links i just kind of got bored and i was like man i, know I can make a brush for this and it's kind of fun to make brushes i i think they're cool so i i made it and i shared it and like 
overwhelming, you know, a lot of people liked it. But they, then some people were like just really hating on it. And they're like, oh, cheater. That's wrong, man. That's not real art. And all these comments came out. I'm thinking, what, what are you talking about? Like, if it works, it works. And if you, if you don't know how to, like, speed through things, um, good luck working in comics. I mean, I, I've never worked on a, a per se monthly title where it had to be knocked out that month uh, on the day. I mean, I've worked on a lot of books, but it's been a lot more forgiving than month, a monthly title. And it was still hard. It was still really rough. Like, I, I, I have total respect for the people that knock out a monthly title. Them dudes and dudettes are amazing. They are, they are machines. Um, yeah, I have total respect for that. But I also think that, man, they've they got to be taking some shortcuts here and there. I mean, if not, then, wow. I guess they're on a whole other level than I'll ever know. I don't know. But but there's there's times when you're, you're just going to take shortcuts, and there's nothing wrong with it. Like, you're going to look, you know, you can get really good at drawing from reference. That always looks horrible. I think I'm going to erase that. Um, and if you think about it, like your ability to look at reference and then transpose it to another sheet of paper or a screen, that's just one of your many skill sets. That's just, and that's kind of copying. I mean, it's not a, it's funny. It's nobody looks at that generally as a bad way of copying. I've never really heard anybody say that and they shouldn't, but they also shouldn't think that about creating a brush or a pattern or a design or anything that helps you get it done because Ultimately, it's still you using your creative ability to put it all together and make something cohesive that looks good. And that's not easy. For somebody that doesn't have um, artistic uh, talent or training, it's going to show. It's going to show that it's not good. So I think it's silly when people are like so critical of, you know, like how they got to the end result. I mean, unless you're just flat out just, you know, copying and tracing everybody else's work and saying, look at what I did. I mean, that's, that's always wrong, obviously, but yeah, I thought people would think that chain was just a great time saver. I mean, and a lot of people did, but they were, there were some people that were just kind of complaining about it. And I thought it was funny I mean, whatever. Can't please everybody, I guess. Hey, Richard, good to have you. Thank you. Pat, burning flesh. I have just, just of spawn. I have just of spawn. I have one of spawn. Is that what you're saying? Um, yeah, but that's, and this could be spawn, really. You know, you cover up the face, there you go, or, you know, kind of does look like spawn. But, but see how, I mean, I don't know. To me, that stuff's fun. And let me get to the part where I start kind of um, adding some shading over top of this. I think somebody was mentioning wanting to uh, see some, you know, like line feathering, right? So let me know if you guys got any particular questions about this process, but the next stage of this is just getting in here and adding a little bit more of, uh, you know, some rendering or whatever, but just trying to bring this out a bit further. So generally the way that I'll do this is I'll go for the biggest areas first. So this is like this big chunk of, burning flesh as Pat put it All right I think Pat said that yeah some comments here double check sometimes I don't scroll down on this and I can't tell what uh who's saying what hello from Russia Reboot. Uh oh, what happened? Did I lose you guys? Did somebody just put reboot and stream is down? Uh oh. Say something, people. Talk to me. Talk to me, Maverick. Just keeps repeating for me now, not even live. Oh no. All right, what do we do here, folks? We 
We good to go? Did it come back? Okay. Sheesh. Sorry. These live streams are so scary. In one minute they work, next minute they don't. I start freaking out. Throwing my computer around. Acting like it's the computer's fault. Poor computer didn't do anything. Is it even called a computer anymore? I don't even know if it is. What's the new, the new term? What do you kids call it these days? When I was a, when I was growing up, they were called computers. Now they're called devices and tablets. And... All right. So yeah, everything's working fine. All right. Good. Okay, so looking at this, do you guys got any questions? There's certain areas that you want me to address. Maybe I could do the eye. Usually people are into seeing how the eyes are done. Oh, they're still called computers, thank goodness. Glare on the eyes, give them that crazy look. You guys are probably getting sick of eyes, right? Since two videos ago, I was just sitting there drawing an eyeball. I get stuck on these tangents. Eyes, there's a lot in the eyes, though. You know, windows to the soul, as they say. Goodness, what's going on now? I got a message. YouTube's not receiving video. Ah, boy. Right now, it looks like it's working. But hold on, I got an error here. Is there a way to hide your selections? Yeah, it's Command H. Or, I don't know if you're using a PC, it's Control H. Uh, it's Command, Control. Uh, let's see. YouTube is not receiving enough video to maintain smooth streaming. As such, viewers will experience suffering. That's got to be my internet, right? Goodness. All right. Sorry if you guys are getting some bad experience here. I don't. I don't know what's going on. I'm just gonna keep drawing and hope for the best, I guess. All right, and I think some finer lines right here. Push this area back. Let me check something here because I keep getting these warnings. Uh, you're working on a tutorial anything else these days yeah my next uh my next series of lessons um that are going to probably start on skillshare but then they'll end up on udemy and everything else gumroad all that good stuff are going to be on drawing um clothing but I'm also just putting together a bunch of traditional art lessons. So a lot of people requested more content where I draw on paper. I'm working on those. So kind of a couple of things. But then I figured the, you know, clothing and, um, you know, I'll do like superhero suits and designs and all that stuff. I figured that would be a good one. Um, but yeah, you guys are always welcome to keep feeding me ideas. And then I'll, I'll see what I can get out in the next... You know, cause sometimes some of these lessons like kind of overlap and they, you know, they fit together well with something else. So I might be working on a um, lesson drawn 
I don't know, characters, and then somebody's like, hey, you know, I really want to know how to draw, um, you know, leather jackets, whatever. And then I'll kind of segue that into the character design course or whatever. So, yeah, just let me know if you guys got any specific ideas you want to see. When you use command, the whole window disappears. Um, yeah, it shouldn't do that. Let me try it here. Let me let me just do it right now. While I got you here. So if I select the eye, and you said you want to hide the selection, what is it? It's command H. Oh, I think you're right. It does make that disappear, doesn't it? The command F. No. Nope. Well, it should be under selection, hide select. No. I know there's a way to do it. Where is it? You're going to make me Google it, aren't you? Yeah, sorry about that. What the heck is it? All right, so you got the selection. You're right, it's not Command H, maybe Command Shift H. No. Command H, it does make it disappear. Because that's actually hide the uh, interface. Man, I'm sorry, I'm gonna have to get back with you on that. I really thought that that, uh, it's Command H on Photoshop, but there is a way to do it. Somebody else wanna answer that one? I know, Pat, you want Battle Max. I know, they just kind of got these other things going on, so I gotta, gotta get to that one. Control D in Photoshop. Mandy? No, that's not it. Try Control D here, Control D. Oh, it's still there. Hmm. I do not know. I'm well, sorry about that. Yeah, sorry, Lewis. There is a way to do it. I just can't remember it. That's crazy. Apparently, I don't use that feature very often. Um, I was going to say you could use your... No, that's really the only way to do it. I was going to say you could use a quick mask, but you're still going to see it in the way. Well, you know, another way to do it is you can cut... Eh, you probably don't want to do that, but you can cut your work up. You know, if you're going to generate the selection... You can cut the work and then lock transmit. But no, you're probably working on just lines, right? So you wouldn't want to do that either. That would work for painting. That's why I do that a lot for my digital my digital paintings, but yeah, really sorry about that one. All right. Oh, somebody, I saw somebody ask, like, what's my best course on Udemy? Uh, you know, that's that's tough to say. It just depends on what your needs are. But I would say the one that gets the best overall response from everybody as a whole would be the How to Improve Your Figure Drawing Step-by-Step. -step. Uh, that one seems to kick butt. That's been my best course for a long period. But it's, it's older now. It needs some updating. But it's uh, a lot of people take it, so... Yeah, glad 
thanks to uh, Sketch Turner for the nice comment. And I'm glad you learned a lot from this channel. From me, that's, that's awesome to hear. Thank you very much. I feel like we should probably do a different area. The illustration now for a little bit, just so it's not too repetitive. And I don't know if you guys are experiencing it, but man, I keep saying the stream health is bad on my end. It's getting really annoying. I'm not doing anything different than I've done other streams. Yeah, good call. Uh, Richard saying box office artist has some good uh, mech um, illustrations. I, I noticed one of those. He does those pretty well. It's just not really my cup of tea. I need to, I mean, I like it. It's weird because I grew up on like, I used to love like, um, God, what was it, Robotech, I think. Um, I used to love mech stuff and I definitely was a Transformers fan. I still am, but I just don't draw them as much. I think it's back to that thing of, what we kind of already touched on of like you know do you like organic drawing better than uh geometric drawing and uh i think when you do those those mechs and things like that you, you definitely lean towards geometric you know conceptual design um where i like the real creepy weird stuff like this I think it's like if you know do you like clean lines or do you like randomized uh messy lines but i will try to do it acted and all of a sudden instead of working on the art i'm you know checking some instagram post or something whatever you know so not alone here right we all kind of feel that i hope or am i just weird Are you planning on doing a review of your comic next week? Pay me under the table and I'll speak good of it. Nice. Well, now that you voice that verbally on a channel, on my channel to a bunch of different people, I don't, I don't think I can pay you now, right? And now politics work. You gotta, I can't come out. Because then I, it would show that I'm corrupt. I'm not corrupt. Usually. No, you, you tell everybody exactly how you feel about my comic. I would only want the truth to be heard. Unless it's really bad. In that case, just, you know, what's the old adage? If you got nothing nice to say. Huh? No, I, I want to hear it. Good or bad. Let me know like, what I should be working on right now. Blackstone. But instead, I'm drawing Two Face. Is my agenda here? Okay, so now I think we got the most of the gritty side of the face pretty well done. We start working on this other side, clean side. Don't down yourself too much, Rick. Yeah, it is buffering and loading, isn't it? Dang it, man. Yeah, people are dropping out. Getting worse, isn't it? All right, well, 
and we're gonna we're gonna probably have to bring this one to a close people because it's uh the experience can't be good if it's keeps buffering Hey, what's up, Perry? Yeah, thanks for the uh, nice comment. Yeah, it's this thing's messing up, you guys. I don't know what to do here. So I'm going to have to bring this one to a close. Um, I got to get to the bottom of this. And really want to do more of these live streams, but it seems like every time I jump on now, it gives me nothing but errors. So, yeah. Not cool. Kind of makes me a little bit ticked at uh, Comcast since I pay good money for my internet. Apparently I don't pay enough. Okay, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and bring this one to close. I think it just locked up. So, very sorry everybody. I appreciate everybody stopping by and trying to watch this live stream. Uh, I will bring some of them back your way real soon. Uh, I just don't want to, you know, have you here watching this when it's just buffering and stopping over and over. So, thanks very much. I will get more on the schedule very soon. I appreciate the support of the channel. Good luck with your art and bye for now.